I've had multiple viewers ask me in comments whether the Remington carbine revolver is more powerful than the handgun version because of the longer barrel, and it's taken me a while to get around to a chronograph test, but that's what we're here to do today. I'm Dustin, and you're watching Guns of the West. Now my suspicion is that the carbine will be more powerful. As I've said in other videos and shown in other chronograph tests, a longer barrel gives the powder charge more time to build up pressure before the projectile exits. Now of course it does eventually reach a point of diminishing returns if the barrel is too long, but other than that, it generally does make it more powerful. So we're going to do a chronograph test today. I've got both of these guns loaded up with some paper cartridges with 25 grains of triple FG black powder. So let me just get my ear protection on. And right up here I've got the radar chronograph, one of the handiest things I've ever bought for the channel. And we're going to start with the handgun version. So let's go ahead and just fire off some shots. I'm just going to fire three shots and we'll just take an average velocity from them. Let's see, I can't quite get on the sights, but I'm just going to shoot into a sand pile here. Here we go. That's one. Two. Oh. <laughs> For everybody who thinks Remingtons don't have cap jams, there was one. Just a different kind of cap jam. And three. All right. Let's move over to the carbine. Make sure we're still lined up on that chronograph. Let's see, bring back, make sure the muzzle's still up ahead of the chronograph. All right, that should work fine. And let's go right into that sand pile again. One. Two. Still lined up on there and three. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some chronograph results. One of my shots with the handgun did not register on the chronograph, so I only have two to pull an average from, but that's okay. I don't think this will be a neck and neck close comparison. The average velocity that the handgun pushed a .454 diameter round ball was 817 feet per second. So the power is 209.4 foot pounds of energy. And the carbine had an average of 984 feet per second with the exact same .454 diameter round ball, so its power is 303.23 foot-pounds of energy. That's substantially more powerful, and keep in mind, again, it's shooting the same lead ball with the exact same powder charge. Well, there you go. The carbine did prove to be more powerful than the handgun, and again, that's because of that longer bear. Oh, no! Oh, you know, I really thought I had wiped out the high fructose gang and gotten those carbonated bandits out of these parts, but luckily though, we have the more powerful Remington here, so I'm going to see if I can take them out. Well, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by the high fructose gang, is that yes, the carbine is more powerful because of that longer barrel. Now, both of these guns are 44 caliber, the new model army and the carbine. They both shoot the same .454 diameter round ball, but again, that long barrel gives that powder charge more time to keep building up pressure. Well, anyway, to those who've been asking, I apologize for the delay in getting this video done, but I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. And if you look in the description, you'll see where to find me on social media. Thank you so much for watching.